Greetings in Jesus name. Welcome to this beautiful evening. Wherever you are, whatever time zone you are tuning in, we pray that this morning, this afternoon, this evening, the Lord will bless you. The greatest blessing that we can receive from God's presence is his voice, his word, his heart, his mind. A sneak peek into how God sees us. a sneak peek into what he desires from us a sneak peek into what we are truly capable of when we have that revelation everything in our lives it begins to transform it begins to get upgraded to the next level and i believe that each and every one of you that are here you have a understanding of who you are you know that the lord chose you you didn't choose god God chose you. That's what it says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Even before the foundation of the earth were laid, God he chose you. He set his eyes upon you. He planned you. He prepared you all through your life. You may think that there are so many things that have been coincidences or accidents, but the Lord's hand was actively working in each and every area each and every season of your life will you come this moment this season this time this evening just trusting what god is already doing in your life just believing that he will continue to work in you the way that god works is not around you he will first work in you giving you the power and the grace and the wisdom and the understanding first to grasp his plans for you his love for you and consequently to understand his heart for the world around us and then he will open up your lives your heart to be able to become a blessing to the world around you and i believe that each and every one of you here you're here because you're a revivalist you are here because you love jesus ferociously and you love him enough to want to now represent this jesus to the world around us i don't know how many of you have been on telegram receiving from our prophet every time he posts something there if you haven't subscribed to it yet make sure to search for shaiju matthew on telegram and you will be able to connect with the channel where you can receive constant inspiration and revelations that will give you grace to overcome whatever you're facing i was personally very encouraged with the last text that went up on the group and i'd like to just read the conclusion that dad wrote he said today be found at his feet will meet there your trajectory won't go down let us carry you along it's glory to glory period This blessing it is loaded with a revelation of our father's heart for us of a prophet's desire for us that we will be found at the feet of Jesus that is going to be our solution for everything in this season when we are hurt we take it at the feet of Jesus when we are broken we go back to the feet of Jesus when we are disappointed or when we have a struggle when we have a temptation we go back to the feet of jesus we don't try to work out solution in our own strength because it is only to the extent that we abide in the vine that we will bear fruit that we will overcome that when we speak and when we ask for certain things it shall be done so so let us be found at the feet of jesus let us be found in a place of submission let us be found in a place of being under authority i want to thank god for my spiritual parents our prophets the leaders over this ministry prophet shaiju and tini matthew for the way that they have led us for the way that they have been sowing into us week after week and day after day carrying us to the next level today if you're listening make sure to acknowledge the greatness that you are going to inherit because of their investment into your life their presence in our lives is a proof of god's goodness towards us and that is why we are grateful 
That is why we worship and thank God because of our covering. Today, we are going to continue the study of the book of Ephesians. We have been enjoying reading verse by verse, just trying to understand each aspect of what Apostle Paul is trying to teach the church. Let's read from chapter 4 today. Last time we finished chapter 3 and the first three chapters of the book of Ephesians, Paul is laying out a foundation for the church to believe correctly, for them to have a right understanding about who they are and who Jesus is and what the church is supposed to be. And in the last three chapters of the book of Ephesians, Paul is giving us practical advice on how to manifest this greatness that has been deposited on the inside of us. The identity that we have, how do we manifest it? How can we actually walk in it? What are the instructions that we can follow to be able to bring forth this greatness that we have on the inside of us? Let's begin by reading the scriptures for today. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, I beg you to lead a life that is worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. And all of God's people said an Amen. You know, in the next few chapters, we would not necessarily be able to disconnect one scripture to the other because this is going to lead us into something. And that is why if you've missed something, make sure to go back and listen to the previous week's teaching or study that portion of scripture well so that you understand the context. Now, in this scripture, he says, Therefore, because of that, because of what I have written in the last three chapters, what has he written? He has spoken about who he is. He's spoken about how God has blessed the church with all of heaven's wisdom and how he's now made the church into a dwelling place for Jesus' presence. He's spoken to us about how God is now working in us, giving us everything beyond our ability to think and grasp or reason. God is giving it to us according to the power that is working within us. And now Paul is quoting that as the premise for the next statement that he is about to make. He says, Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord. He's said this for the second time in the book of Ephesians, the previous verse in chapter 3 and verse 1. He is repeatedly emphasizing that this is my present physical state. Yes, I am an apostle. Yes, I am a man of God. Yes, I am sent by the Lord for the blessing of each and every one of you. And yet, because of my calling, because of my hard work in serving the Lord, this is what I have to experience in my present condition. I am a prisoner. Physically, I am chained, I have been challenged, I have been limited physically. Now he is saying, because of this, I want you to take up more responsibilities. I want you to rise up to a standard of living that is beyond what you are doing currently. Paul was encouraging the church to now become radical, to not be limited, to not be constrained, to now rise up and do more than what Apostle Paul himself has done. Jesus, when he was about to leave the earth, he looked at the disciples and said, My time is up. I am about to go. But greater works will you guys do because you believe in me and what I have taught you. Now you will do greater works. The reason Apostle Paul is emphasizing the fact that he is in prison 
is because he wants his people to now take up the mantle and move forward and do what he used to do when he was with them he goes on to say i beg you my dear friends to lead a life that is worthy of your calling in a manner that is worthy of the call of god upon your life so in other words it's not enough that we be called it is necessary that we be chosen because jesus said many are called but few are chosen now this can be confusing for us to listen to because we think that god is the one who is doing the calling and he is the one who is doing the choosing so i have nothing to do with it that's not true my dear friends if you go to matthew chapter 22 you would read the story where jesus is talking about many are called and few are chosen if you've heard the teaching the spiritual intelligence from the life of job this is the latest teaching on the shaiju matthew app if you've heard it already you know where i'm going with it there was a king who threw a banquet and when the initial invitees did not show up he opened up the invitation to ordinary folks ordinary people and to each that came into the wedding feast there was an expectation that they would dress in a certain manner in verse 12 the king came to this one person that was not dressed appropriately and he asked him friend what happened to your wedding garments why are you not wearing your wedding clothes and this man he did not have a reply he did not have anything to say in return both of these things disqualified him from being part of the chosen ones because it says in the next verse this guy he was thrown out of the feast because he didn't have the right clothes on and because he didn't have the right words to speak this guy got disqualified is it god who does the calling yes is it god who does the choosing yes and yet our actions the way that we live our life here on the earth it is either qualifying us for that calling or it is disqualifying us from that calling that is why apostle paul explains to us saying you need to live a life that is worthy of your calling you need to dress in a way that is worthy of your calling you need to speak in a way that is worthy of your calling you need to do your relationships in a manner that is worthy of your calling we cannot do life based on what we feel like doing today we cannot eat out and go to homes and have fellowship and you know socialize based on this is what i feel like doing no 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 the calling the invitation from the king has to be the motivation for everything that we do now that has to become the reason why i would go to church why i would bring in sacrificial offerings why i would sacrificially worship why i would take out time to pray why i would take out time to mentor or counsel someone else that is younger in the lord that is why i am going to do everything possible to serve the purposes of god in my generation we need to get our motivation right the 12 disciples they had received a calling by jesus jesus had told them follow me and i will make you fishers of men but somewhere down the line there was a guy called judas his motivation for following jesus got twisted now he is following jesus because he is able to make money on the side now he is able to steal from the money that has been coming to jesus now his purpose of following jesus is not the same that jesus called him for the purpose of calling was to say you need to follow me so that i can make you fishers of men and because judas took his eyes off of the initial calling he is now calculating how can we make more money out of this he is now calculating and saying that i don't think this is profitable for this woman to now give everything to jesus 
he was no longer living his life in a manner that is worthy of his calling i pray that if god had to evaluate us today he would find the right speech he would find the right clothes on us he would find the right attitude the right motivation for everything that we are doing that we would do our life in a manner that is worthy of the calling that we have received reading ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 one, one more time therefore i a prisoner for serving the lord i beg you to lead a life that is worthy of your calling for you have been called by god so there is a definite implication that each and every one of us we have a calling from the lord each and every one of us we have been invited into the inner chambers each and every one of us we've been given a specific assignment each and every one of us we have been given a specific task a specific area of influence and a specific area where we can have dominion this privilege is not only for the pastors and for the leaders in the church no every single one of us every child of god has a specific calling from the lord that is why apostle paul he is addressing the church in general and yet he is telling them that you have been called by god so irrespective of where you are in your walk with god today you need to become convinced of this fact that there is a calling upon your life there is a destination that you need to reach there is a specific assignment that god wants you to complete here on the earth yes we will all ultimately go to heaven yes that is our ultimate destination our ultimate calling and yet there is a specific assignment that god has for each and every one of us but the problem is that sometimes we find it hard to decipher or to decode the call of god over our lives and that is why god has placed leaders pastors teachers mentors spiritual father over our lives so that they can give us specific instructions as to what to do or what to avoid Let's take the example of Apostle Paul. You know how he got transformed, how his life got changed. It was not because somebody shared Jesus with him. It's because Jesus himself appeared before him on the way to Damascus. And once he had an encounter with God, God showed him a vision of Ananias who will come and pray for him and help him in his journey ahead. with god but god didn't tell him what god wanted paul to do but if you read acts chapter 9 very carefully you will see that god spoke to ananias you can read this in acts chapter 9 and verse 15 let me paraphrase it to you god is speaking to ananias and he's telling him saul he's going to become my chosen instrument he's going to become my vessel and he will take my name he will be a bearer of my name a carrier of my name before the gentiles and the kings as well as the people of israel this revelation of paul's calling did not come to apostle paul it came to ananias ananias was a nobody in the new testament church we don't hear of him after this and yet Paul's relationship his submission his obedience to Ananias was fundamental in him understanding the call of God over his life he can't just say i'll just pray i will see god i will just let god speak to me and only then i'll be convinced even apostle paul needed an ananias who would hear from god and tell him this is the call of god over your life you are to become a carrier an instrument to take this message before kings before gentiles and before the nation of israel so now go ahead and pursue this calling live your life in a manner that is worthy of this calling because this is the call of god over your life so today if you are struggling to understand 
what is your calling you need to find a mentor you need to find a leader and you need to submit even if they tell you to do something that you don't feel is the right thing or it's not big enough it is not glorious enough will you just trust the process that the lord has placed you in and will you just allow them to take you one step at a time into the call of god over your life irrespective of whether you already have a revelation of your calling or you're still in the journey of understanding the call of god over your life you should know that you have been called by god now when you live a life that is worthy of that calling you will also be chosen by god and you will qualify to now manifest that calling all the days of your life reading verse one one more time apostle paul says therefore i a prisoner for serving the lord i beg you to lead a life that is worthy of your calling for you have been called by god in the next few verses now he is going to explain what it means to lead a life that is worthy of your calling verse 2 he says always be humble and gentle always a hundred percent of time there's no moment where you can let your guard down there's no point of your day no point of your week no point of your walking with god can you say okay today i can take a break from being humble and gentle when i'm on the road when somebody cuts into my lane i can stop being humble and gentle when i am in an argument in a restaurant with my waiter i can suddenly stop becoming humble and gentle no 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 this has to become my lifestyle where whatever i do whatever i say every relationship that i am in i have to exercise humility and i have to exercise gentleness i believe that this kind of humility and gentleness is a manifestation of kingdom royalty the kings and the leaders of this world they do not understand the perspective of being humble and gentle on the flip side they would say the greater is your role in the organization the more firm you need to become the more harsher your tone should be the more stronger your rebuke on your colleagues or the ones that are working under you you cannot be humble and gentle here or else you will not get your work done or else people will not respect you or else they will take you for granted but when jesus came to teach us about kingdom royalty he said your leadership your greatness your royalty is not going to be the way that the people of the world do their royalty no you are going to be the least among all your brothers you are going to not crave for the position in the front you're going to go take the last seat you're not going to be the ones who want to talk all the time you are going to expect to lower yourself down and when you humble yourself god will lift you up and that is why apostle paul says if you need to live in a manner that is worthy of your calling see this calling that we have it is a high calling it is not a calling to be a nobody and a nothing here on the earth it is a calling to exercise dominion in every sphere of society there is a calling to exercise dominion in the supernatural the spiritual realm and the physical realm at the same time and yet god says the way to that dominion the path to that dominion is for us to lead a life that is clothed with humility and with gentleness apostle paul would explain this in galatians chapter 5 when he said that the fruit of the spirit it is humility it has gentleness in it so it is not something that we manifest because of our self control and our years of training ourselves no you have to rely on the holy spirit when you abide in jesus the fruit will begin to manifest automatically the same attitude that is in christ jesus will now begin to flow through you 
just like Jesus was humble, just like Jesus was gentle. Now you and I, we will also automatically become humble and gentle. But don't think that this is going to be an easy task. Just like cultivating a fruit is work, cultivating the fruit of the Holy Spirit is also work. That is why Apostle Paul is asking you to keep this in mind, to always be humble and gentle with your responses, with your dealings, with the way that you would exercise royalty here on the earth. This is the Jesus way of exercising royalty on the earth. That is by being humble and by being gentle. See, humility is a state of what's going on in your heart. Somebody else cannot always testify if you're really humble in your heart or not. But then the next expression of that humility can be seen in your relationships with others. Paul says, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. So that humility and that gentleness is now going to manifest in your patience with one another. If you read the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, it says love, joy, peace. And then patience, kindness, goodness. And then goes on to faithfulness, humility and self-control. Now, self-control, humility and faithfulness, these are characteristics that are just within us. Only we can tell us if we are faithful, if we are gentle and if we have self-control. But the other three characteristics, the characteristic of being patient, of being kind and being good, that is measured in our relationships. And that's why Apostle Paul says, when you are humble and when you are gentle, it has to be shown in the way that you are patient with one another. That is why you need to be in a community. That is why you need to be around people. If you are all by yourself, you will never be tempted not to be patient. You will never know if you are truly humble or not. Only when the Lord would allow the people around us to offend us, when the Lord would allow people that are different from us, that is when we know if we are being patient, if we have the humility and gentleness on the inside of us, if we are growing in the manner of life that is worthy of our calling. All through my life, I used to think that I am humble. I used to think I'm gentle. But then I got married and then I found a person who is completely different from me. Her perspectives were different, her viewpoints were different, how she approached God and things of God were different. And all of a sudden, I realized that I'm not such a humble person because it's easy for me to be humble and gentle when it's just me. But when someone else is added into the equation and my patience is tested, and when I have to really work hard to bring in an equilibrium in every aspect of my life, where I have to stay true to myself, my convictions, my calling, and at the same time, I have to love this person. That is where I realize that I need to now grow in humility. I need more and more of the Holy Spirit, more and more of His presence manifesting the fruit of the Spirit in me so that I can now grow in patience. Friends, one thing that you need to know is that none of the things that God expects us to do, He wants you to do it on your own ability. He gives you the resource. He gives you the ability. He gives you the presence of the Holy Spirit. The more that you and I be filled in the Holy Spirit, the more easily, the more conveniently, the more comfortably we will be able to manifest the fruit of the Spirit. The reason that we struggle with lack of patience is not because of our family history or because of our uh, environment or because of that person that is uh, hurting you or bothering you. No, the reason we are not able to grow in patience is because we are not filled in the Holy Spirit. Everything that we need for transformation of our life, 
it is already available in the presence in the person of the holy spirit if only those that have the eyes to see it those that have a revelation of what the holy spirit brings into our lives will draw it out will cultivate it will manifest it because of their dependence on the holy spirit apostle paul he goes on to say always be gentle and humble you need to be patient with each other and you need to make allowance for each other's faults you need to bear with one another you need to make space for each other to make mistakes you need to show tolerance for one another show forbearance we need to allow one another to be different because of that patience that we have because we are full of the holy spirit because we have grown in our humility and gentleness now we are not going to force our revelations on someone else now we are not going to threaten someone else to obey us or listen to us or to treat us in a certain manner now we are going to make allowance for each other's faults every time that i am tempted to lose patience on somebody else or someone that i'm leading or mentoring what i remember is how much grace and mercy has been shown to me i remember how much god has been patient with me and made allowance for my faults how much my spiritual father he has made allowance for my fault how much my spouse has made allowance for my fault and all of that has to bring me to a revelation that now i need to do the same to others that offend or hurt or bother me jesus taught us in the book of luke chapter 6 and verse 36 and 37 be ye merciful to one another why because your father he is also merciful verse 37 judge not and you will not be judged condemn not and you will not be condemned forgive and you will also be forgiven so when somebody is offending you or hurting you or constantly doing something that is against your belief system it is not your job to go and make that person perfect they have a mentor they have a spiritual father they have a pastor that god has appointed over them they will be corrected and helped and judged and put in the right place in the right manner because of their submission and their alignment to their leaders but this is what you need to do my dear friend you need to be merciful to them you need to display the same mercy that you have received from god for your own life you need to show it to that other person now i understand it's easy for me to say this because that person may be offending you may be practically sinning against you he may be hurting you in physical spiritual financial manners and i'm not saying you continue to let them take advantage of you i'm not saying you continue to leave your doors open you have to draw the correct boundaries around every relationships you need to define each relationship and you need to know how much access you will give to each relationship but that doesn't mean that you will now take the job of becoming a judge over the other person that is not your responsibility if we have to truly live a life that is worthy of our calling then we have to manifest the humility and the gentleness that god has filled us with through his holy spirit we have to manifest the patience the long suffering attitude through our lives and how do we manifest it it is when we make allowance for each other when we bear with one another even when it is hard to do so we do not judge we do not condemn and we show mercy and we show forgiveness because whatever we show to our brothers and sisters we will be treated in the same manner by god the bible says if you forgive you will be forgiven how many of you know that you and i we need forgiveness you and i we go to god regularly asking for help and asking for cleansing and asking for change and transformation and that is possible only according to the measure 
that we are willing to forgive those who sin against us. You need to also remember that the God that you serve, He is a just God. He is not going to forget the injustice that has been done against you. That is why you can confidently just release every hurt, every pain from your heart and let the Lord fight your case. Let the Lord bring in judgment and solutions and answers wherever things have to be aligned. The Bible says, Be merciful as your Father also is merciful. Judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you also will be forgiven. Apostle Paul, he says, This is how you have to lead a life that is worthy of your calling. You have to be humble and you have to be gentle. You have to be patient with each other. In a community where people are different from you, where they have different belief systems, different value systems, different ways of upbringing, you need to be patient with one another. You need to make allowance for each other's mistakes, faults, highs and lows. And all of this because of your love. Because of your love. Because of your love. Now, when you study the fruit of the Spirit, I told you earlier that there are nine characteristics that are mentioned there. There is love, joy, peace. And then there is patience, kindness and goodness. And then there is humility, faithfulness and self-control. Now, the last three, that is humility, your faithfulness and your self-control, you develop it in relationship with yourself. The middle three, which is patience, kindness and goodness, that is what you develop in your relationship with the people around you. However, the first three, that is love, joy and peace, that is what you cultivate through your relationship with God. You cannot grow in love by getting married. You cannot grow in love by you know, meditating on your own mistakes and faults. No, no, no. You want to grow in love, you need to plug yourself to the source of that love that is Jesus himself. So in this scripture, you see Apostle Paul tying down the entire fruit of the Spirit, all the nine characteristics in one verse by saying, you need love that is developed in your relationship with God. And as a result of that love, you need to now be patient and you need to make allowance for each other's faults. And because of the same love that God is constantly filling you with, there is healing happening on the inside of you. All the old wounds of hurt and rejection and low self-esteem has been taken care of, which will eventually cause humility and gentleness to flow out through your life. So you see, Love is the foundation for everything. And this is not a love that your husband or your wife can give you. This is not a love that your parents or your children can affirm or add into your life. This is not a love that the world can give you. This is a love that comes from the person who is love himself. This is a love which we were trying to understand in the previous chapter, the height, the depth, the width, and the length of this love. And this love is what will heal us on the inside, that will strengthen us on the inside, fill us with the ability on the inside to now be patient with one another, to make allowance for everybody's faults. We are not doing this as a religion saying, if I don't forgive, I will be uh, judged by God. No, now love becomes the reason, the motivation for my forgiveness. Love becomes the reason for my showing mercy to my dear brothers. Love becomes the reason why I don't judge. Love becomes the reason why I don't condemn. That's why Apostle Paul would write in 1 Corinthians 13, I can do a lot of things. I can give a lot of money. I can give my body to be burnt. I can just preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. I can do everything. But if I don't have love, if love is not the motivation, the source 
the reason why i do what i do then all of it is in vain may it not be said about us may it not be our destiny may it not be the result of all the hard work that we do with our lives may it all be founded in love and may it also be manifested through love and if you believe it say a loud amen 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 if we proceed further to verse 3 of ephesians chapter 4 apostle paul says now make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit binding yourselves together with peace again apostle paul is teaching us how to live a life that is worthy of our calling so it's not just about being humble and gentle and being patient with one another and making our lovens for each other's faults and growing in our love it says now you need to make every effort the root word in greek for this term is spudazzo which can also be translated as to hurry up to hasten or to exert one's self to go an extra mile to endeavor to work hard and also it means to be diligent how many of you remember the theme of this year is to be diligent because we know that the hand of the diligent will have dominion they will rule so apostle paul says this effort that i'm asking you to do it cannot be a passive effort it has to be a a constant a diligent a persistent effort he's inviting us into a very holy a sacred understanding of unity or in other words oneness we would go into it in more detail the next time but today i want you to remember that this oneness this unity it cannot be attained with a passive effort it has to be an active a diligent a persistent effort to attain such unity such oneness that god wants from us one of the words that are used for spudazzo is labor which implies that it is going to be a painful process at times it is going to be a hard work there is going to be a price that you need to pay there are going to be adjustments that you need to make there are going to be so many compromises changes that you need to make in your pursuit of what god wants to do in your life that sometimes you may become unrecognizable to somebody that is not journeyed with you when they see you after 5 years they will not recognize how your personality has evolved how you treat people different how you treat the presence of god different how you treat your leaders different how you treat people that are under you lesser than you in a different manner how everything has evolved and shifted and changed my dear friends we cannot remain the same from season to season we have to grow and we have to grow exponentially and for that there is a endeavoring that is necessary a labor that is necessary we need to make every effort we need to be diligent we need to be constantly at work with the one goal that i need to lead a life that is worthy of the calling with which i have been called i cannot live according to how i feel i cannot live according to how my situations demand i have to live according to the calling that i have received from god so once the service is over i hope that you can go back home and list down certain things that you're going to do some spudazzo that you are going to do the diligent work that you're going to do have to make certain lists of changes that you want to bring forth in your relationships in every word that you speak your attitude in certain situations every change that you need to bring about because it cannot just be a great amen moment in a service and then we forget all about it later it has to translate into active work that's why paul says you need to do your best 
you need to be eager you need to make every effort you need to endeavor towards it you need to strive you need to become diligent to attain what god wants you to do in your relationships going on ahead there is a particular characteristic to this unity that god wants to develop in the church the bible says you need to keep yourselves united in the spirit this is a unity of the spirit this is not a unity of the bodies this is not a unity of the souls the reason for this unity is not like minded people or the fact that we all feel the same way about certain issues or the fact that we all look the same or the fact that we all have the same social status no no the reason for this unity has to be something of the spirit it has to be a spiritual unity a physical unity will only give birth to a tower of babel and that kind of a unity was very easy to break because all you needed was difference of language and everybody went their own separate ways but when our unity is a spiritual unity it is not going to be easily broken the bible says in ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 12 a person that is standing alone can be attacked and can be defeated but two can stand back to back and conquer however a three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken it works so beautifully in the context of marriage where the bible says that god has joined us together with a portion of his spirit and the spirit of god he becomes the third person the third cord and that's why a three braided cord or a three stranded cord it is not easily broken however this can also be applied with all your relationships that are outside of marriage what about jesus being the center of your relationship with your brother or sister in the church the bible says where two people gather in my name i am present in their midst which means when i gather to have a conversation with my brother about jesus jesus is in our midst in the middle of us and if that be true it is possible for me to have a three stranded cord relationship with my brother because it's a spiritual relationship and the spirit of god is right here in the center and the presence of god becomes the mediator for every conversation for every transaction that i have with my brother and such a unity of the spirit it cannot be easily broken when i make my agenda and my needs or my desires or my expectations the reason for my relationship with my brother then it can easily be broken if it is just about that person's needs or desires or expectations it can be easily broken but if we are coming together to understand the purposes of god's spirit in this relationship hosting his presence together growing in him together then this unity is no longer a unity of the mind or the body now this is a unity of the spirit because he is in the midst of us because he is the one that we are gathering around because he is at the center of it all this relationship this conversation this transaction is all about jesus and that is what it means when the bible says make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit which means you need to be diligent to make sure to avoid all the flesh element all the soul elements in your relationship then it becomes easier for this relationship to stand the test of time then you are actually leading a life that is worthy of your calling am i saying that you should not be emotional in your relationships no not at all i'm saying you cannot let the emotions have the upper hand i'm not saying that you have to be intellectually shut down in conversations i'm saying that your intellect cannot be the reason and the motivation 
and the goal of this relationship it has to be a unity of the spirit if you can preserve this unity of the spirit with each other in the body of Christ in the church in our communities wherever we gather to host the presence of God only then are we leading a life that is worthy of the calling with which we have been called by God please remember that everything hinges on our response to the invitation that God has given us we can either walk in unprepared without the right clothes or we can come in clothed in gentleness and in humility being patient with one another being bearing with one another because we are grounded and founded on love and we are willing to make every effort to keep ourselves united in the spirit to preserve the unity of the spirit to preserve the move of the spirit to preserve the work of the spirit and that my dear friends is the right way to prepare for the great wedding day that is the right way to prepare to encounter jesus that is the right way to prepare to qualify ourselves for the high calling with which god has called us apostle paul he goes on to complete that statement in verse 3 he says make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit binding yourselves together with peace there has to be a bond of peace in the body of christ it is a sad thing when there is no peace in your relationships with other people in the church i can imagine that somebody outside the church who doesn't understand the principles that you follow who don't understand the values and the revelations that you have received when they criticize you that's logical that's understandable because they don't have the same revelation but it doesn't make sense for children of god who have encountered god together who have the same unity of the spirit who have the same grace in the spirit realm when they are unable to bind themselves together with peace then it's a big problem that is why apostle paul says now it's your responsibility knowing the fact that god has broken the hostility that exists between us knowing the fact that we are now seated with christ in heavenly places knowing the fact that he has given us a understanding and a revelation of what love really is now the ball is back in your court will you make every effort will you do your due diligence will you fight for it eagerly work for it endeavor towards maintaining a unity of the spirit in the bond of peace through the bond of peace in other words you can't just say if it happens it happens if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen remember god is not the one who is going to make this happen God is asking you to be the one who will make every effort. So it is not God's responsibility, it is our responsibility to keep ourselves bound together. This unity is a unity of the spirit. However, to manifest it, you will have to do active labor. You will have to do some spudadzo so that you can bring it forth. when you go back and read the previous few chapters of the book of ephesians chapter 1 2 and 3 you should remember that the lord is laying a foundation for everything else that is going to come later so that is going to give us divine abilities divine understanding in chapter 1 paul begins to pray saying we need our spiritual eyes to be open why is that it is so that i can be now united in the spirit so that we can be bound together with peace because if our spiritual eyes are not open we will not be able to see all the demonic attacks that come in that we allow because of our disunity because of our bitterness because of our unforgiveness towards each other and i know this for sure that peacelessness is not a portion of our churches it is not a 
thing that will be even heard of remotely spoken about in any of our communities no we will be a church we will be a gathering we will be a community that knows how to be patient with each other even with new people even with those that come to the church for the very first time and they have no clue of our culture but we are going to be patient with them we will make allowance for their faults because we are founded in love because we manifest everything through that love as we spend some time praying tonight i hope that we can intentionally just pray that each of us we will be able to lead a life that is worthy of our calling we need a revelation of what is our calling and we need to be able to lead a life that is now worthy of that calling everything else doesn't matter what people say about us doesn't matter how much resources we've got doesn't matter what really matters is whether our lives it is matching up to the standard of our calling where we are headed is it the same as where we are journeying right now is our conversations in alignment with our calling is our relationships in alignment with our calling is our giving to the lord in alignment with our calling is our submission to our leaders our pastors in alignment with our calling is our ministry our teaching the words that we declare from our social media pages and whatever we declare from the stage is it in alignment to our calling have we fixed our eyes on the calling and not on the other things that we can so easily get distracted by am i leading a life that is worthy of my calling and if i'm not i need to uproot every weed i need to uproot every poison every bitterness every struggle that there is every double mindedness that i have i need to disconnect from it jesus said anybody that puts their hand on the plow and then they look back they are not worthy so we need to pray tonight lord give us the grace to not look back like lot's wife we do not want to become a pillar of salt that is completely useless no we want to be the salt of the earth we want to be the light in this world yes we don't want to look back into where we have come from what all sacrifices we have had to make no it is all worth it it is all worth it compared to the glory of the calling that is in front of us everything that i have given up everything that we have had to say goodbye to it is worth it yes daddy we just thank you for this beautiful time that you've given us to investigate what your word says to understand how we ought to change certain areas certain attitudes that we have so that we can be in line with your heart for our lives tonight we surrender our bodies souls and spirits in order that we can be humble and gentle in order that we may be patient with one another so that we can make allowance for each other's faults so that we can be rooted in love so that we could make every diligent effort to maintain the unity of the spirit so that we can be in a bond of peace all through the days of our lives lord we break every confusion every peaceless atmosphere in homes in our communities our gatherings if there is anything that is irritating anybody i pray that you would expose the root cause and today there shall be a bond of peace that we will be bound together not with the unity of the flesh or the soul but with the unity of the spirit with you in the center you in our midst oh god and we become a triple braided cord we submit ourselves to your will in jesus name we pray amen it's time for us to pray it's time for us to go deeper into the heart of god don't stop praying let's continue let the fire continue to burn on the altar we'll see you on sunday morning and until then let the shalom of god keep you bound together in the unity of the spirit amen